There's lots of focus right now on early 5G standalone core platform deployments and what this can enable for service providers. But how do 5G core developments tie in with the telco cloud and edge strategies? Well, to explore this topic, I'm talking with George Nazi, Global VP for Telecom, Media, Entertainment and Gaming Industry Solutions at Google Cloud. So George, uh, good to talk to you again. Um, we're at the stage of early 5G standalone core deployments. Why is this important for telco service strategies? 5G standalone is extremely important um, for the communication service providers that want to unleash the totality of the power of 5G. Um, if you are just entering into the 5G domain, um, you can probably still get away without having to have uh, a 5G standalone core. But if you really want to unleash the totality of the power, and what do I mean by that? Um, 5G is, has multiple capabilities that it will bring. It will bring, uh, of course, a throughput, which is 10x uh, what we've seen uh, on, at 4G, but it also uh, will, will provide an acceleration in the mobility capability, tracking um, uh, mobile devices at 500 kilometers per hour. Um, it will have a, a latency capability at less than 10 milliseconds as compared to probably 40 to 50 milliseconds with 4G. Um, it will provide uh, uh, the capability to have uh, uh, millions and billions of, of, of devices, uh, way more than 4G provides. So there are multiple capabilities that 5G brings that 4G has not been able to bring. Um, two, with 5G, the architecture is much more uh, in tune with a cloud native architecture where you're leveraging the scale of cloud in order to, to provide that capability. Three, with 5G, you're, you're, you'll be able to create an end-to-end -end slicing capability service. Uh, you'll be able to leverage the capability of the data, the machine learning, uh, the analytics. You'll be able to leverage the uh, 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 architecture capability of a cloud when it comes to DevOps, when it comes to continuous integration, continuous development. So there are many things that 5G brings. And if you tie it uh, to the uh, traditional core, I'm not going to say legacy core, but to the traditional core, you will not be able to unleash the total capability of 5G, which is why it is important and many telcos are focusing on the 5G core uh, SA. And you, 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 and you see many operators discussing and talking about this, especially as we move into some of the open RAN capability as well, and, and how do you disaggregate that capability. So what role do cloud platforms play in 5G core deployments? And can we expect to see hybrid cloud strategies dominate? Clouds play an important role um, in 5G especially when it comes to deploying 5G on a native infrastructure. So if you really want to enable the scalability of 5G um, with the latency that's needed, um, you really would need to be able to implement a native 5G <clears throat> cloud capability so that you can, you can have this, uh, this underlying the infrastructure, especially as you move into continuous integration, continuous development, uh, leveraging a lot of the scalability of the cloud, the security of the cloud. Um, and definitely the hybrid cloud implementation um, is extremely important. Uh, for us, uh, for instance, for us at Google Cloud, um, we deliberately are building Anthos um, in order to uh, operate in a, in a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud environment. Uh, so that to enable the CSPs, um, the flexibility, no vendor lock-in at the same time, uh, allow them to have the power and, and the scale of, uh, of the cloud. So uh, definitely hybrid uh, cloud will play uh, an extremely important role, um, uh, similarly with multi-cloud, and, and, and the cloud native infrastructure will allow you to have a much reduced cost implementation of 5G uh, at a much more scalable and secure uh, um, option. Is enough attention being paid to the next-gen OSS and BSS requirements of 5G? Is the development and deployment of such support systems important? 
definitely extremely important. It's extremely important. And we probably are not paying enough attention yet on the OSS and the BSS. Um, and that's because most uh, operators and, and, and most of the technology has really been looking at how do you implement the components of 5G? Um, uh, how, do you, how do you implement uh, the core, uh, as, as we just discussed earlier, uh, the virtualization capability when it comes to the RAN and, uh, and, uh, and other areas? How do you embed the native cloud, the Kubernetes, uh, the, the control plane? Um, uh, how, how do you implement uh, uh, not just virtualization, but the software defined network aspect of it? Moreover, there are the services that will be enabled on 5G that will make it fairly complex for the OSS and the BSS to deal with, especially when we talk about network slicing and, and, and delivering that uh, to the enterprises, or when we ta start talking about um, uh, uh, VR or virtual reality or XR. Uh, and, and, and finally, how do you also harness the data analytics and AI? So what we are seeing is that as you start moving into 5G and start implementing uh, this capability, the orchestration layer becomes a very important component on the OSS and BSS. Um, and if I want to draw on my, my uh, previous experience, when we looked at, um, at OSS, for instance, you know, usually you divide it into six different platforms, you know, assigned design, logical inventory, fulfillment, assurance, uh, security, network planning, and workflow. A lot of these elements will also start becoming part of the implementation that you do on 5G as part of the, the orchestration. Two, you have to be able to manage the new and the old as you start building that OSS around that capability. And three, you really need to think about the new services that you will be launching. And then how do you provision these new services that I touched on earlier? Uh, when it comes to the OSS and the BSS and how do you build for it and how do you monetize it. So not enough attention uh, is yet uh, uh, being paid. We're all, uh, everybody is thinking about this. The ecosystem partners are all looking at this uh, because right now we've been focused uh, much more on the network aspects of 5G uh, and the cont containerization of, of that capability. Excellent points there, George. Now, you, you mentioned security in there. Uh, and as 5G telco platforms become more open and distributed, what does this mean for the security considerations of network operators? Security is an extremely important element, especially in a distributed model. As cloud players, um, we uh, have embedded security early on in our distributed capability as we developed our cloud solutions. As you know, Ray, um, at Google, for instance, we have nine uh, different products that has more than a billion users uh, on each of these products, you know, between Gmail, YouTube, uh, and, and other products. So uh, and it is, uh, what, what, what's, what's, what's important here is how do you embed security in a distributed model? At the same time, there is an advantage when you embed it in a distributed model because you can actually isolate uh, if there is a security breach isolated into just that distributed uh, model where, where, where the attack happens, of course, there will be more sophistication, but there's also much more security. We, you know, we've, we've had uh, to really embed it and develop our security aspects at scale in order to fulfill the demand of our clients and the billions of users uh, that, that are implemented in order to also reliably provide that service. Um, and the same thing for the CSPs, they will really have to think, and this is, this is a big area that we're helping CSPs, in how do, we, how, how do they develop the security aspects uh, in a distributed model versus a centralized model. And that brings us neatly on to uh, how Google Cloud is working with telcos to advance their 5G strategies. Uh, is Google Cloud a natural partner? And do you encounter much skepticism about the role of public cloud companies in 5G? We believe we're absolutely um, a fantastic partner for the CSPs. Um, and actually, our strategy is deliberate to partner with the CSPs and the ecosystem partner. Um, one, one of the, you know, uh, probably four or five things that we differentiate ourselves and that we're partnering and we're leveraging with the CSPs uh, is the fact that we have at the core uh, of our cloud a very large scale network that's highly secure, highly reliable. So we take that capability and we complement it with the CSPs in order to unleash the power of the CSPs when it comes to the edge and, and the new services. 
Um, two, um, at the heart of what we do is, a, is an open source heritage and legacy where that enables the CSPs avoiding vendor lock-in and, and, and also an acceleration from a development perspective in order to be able uh, to run on, on Google Cloud. Three, um, we're enabling Anthos, which is a hybrid cloud that allows all, as well the CSPs to be able to go uh, uh, uniformly from the IT estate to the network estate uh, uh, across uh, multiple clouds. Um, so, so the partnership uh, with the CSPs is extremely important and crucial, especially as I said earlier, that we see with 5G a massive growth, a massive growth of devices that requires the collective uh, partnership between the cloud players, uh, uh, the communication players, the ecosystem partners, in order to really enable and unleash that power uh, to give the benefit to the users, whether you are a, a consumer or an, or an enterprise uh, user. So uh, we, we've had, we have many engagements and conversations with the clients. Uh, uh, we understand the complementary effect and, and the deliberate strategy where we don't compete with, with our partners, with our uh, CSPs, rather than uh, we partner with the, with the CSPs in order to unleash that uh, capability. George, are you still encountering much skepticism about the role of public cloud companies in 5G? Not as much, uh, because once we have engaged with the CSPs and we are having the conversation about how do we unleash the collective power of 5G, to, you know, together, how do we unleash the, the, the power and the scale of 5G across all of these services? We are discovering that actually it takes a village to really uh, provide that capability. It takes all of us along with an open ecosystem of partners to really be able to, to deliver that capability. Two, um, none of us alone will be able to provide this. Even though, for instance, Google has uh, a significant uh, network capability at the core of it, there is no way we can go into 200 plus countries and be able to provide that capability in each and every country, which is why the partnership is extremely important with the CSPs and the CSPs are understanding this. And actually the advantage is how do we leverage the power of the cloud to enable these services and capabilities to unleash the 5G services, whether it's the consumer or the enterprise via the CSPs and together we're able to do this. And how important is sustainability to the communication service sector right now? Uh, and will the shift to 5G help the industry to meet its sustainability goals? Sustainability is extremely important, ex extremely important uh, for us, for the world. Um, and, and, and the collective have been uh, working significantly on this topic. Um, we have seen that in, in 2010, uh, um, Enterprises have used 1% uh, of the uh, electricity, while in 2020, uh, uh, they, doubled the, they doubled the amount of electricity being used, um, uh, sorry, not doubled, 10x the electricity that's, that's been used, while uh, the, 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 the power that was consumed was only 6%. What that means is everybody is putting their effort into this. Two, as we said, uh, with 5G, there is an energy efficiency that will come with it, but at the same time, because there are billions of devices, that means we're going to be using uh, way more electricity, which means, which brings uh, the sustainability agenda at, at the center stage. And as Google Cloud, um, you know, we pride ourselves uh, to be uh, uh, the, 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 the cloud player uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the most green uh, electricity that's being used. Um, if, if, if I want to give you some stats, uh, uh, Ray, if, if, if you don't mind, I just, I'm, I'm just going to give those to you. Um, in 2007, uh, we were the first major company to become carbon neutral. Since 2017, every year, we've matched 100% of our electricity consumption with renewable energy purchases. 2021, we're the first cloud to launch carbon-free energy scores. And today, Google is one of the world's largest corporate purchases of clean energy. And by 2030, we aim to be the first major company to operate carbon free 24 by 7. Um, sorry, I had to read them. I just wanted to give you the accurate statistics about how important sustainability and green energy is for Google Cloud or, and for Google 
and, and how we're really putting this at the center stage of our agenda. Okay, George, well, that's great to hear. That is so central to what Google Cloud is doing. Great to talk to you as ever. Thanks for joining us today.